Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with butternut squash cakes. This video is a team effort between me and my friend Stephanie Stiovetti, seen here checking her look in a meat cleaver. So Stephanie is a friend of mine and a gluten-free blogger, and she invited me to check out her famous gluten-free butternut squash cakes recipe. So I jumped at the chance, and really I would have been crazy not to. All right, so this recipe starts by peeling a butternut squash. Be very careful. There are a few things slipperier than a peeled butternut squash. So we're going to cut this in big chunks because the first step here is we're going to grate this using our grater attachment on a food processor. And by the way, if you're poor and don't have one of these, you can grate it by hand. It'll work. And we're going to need about two cups for this recipe. Now, because butternut squash vary in size, just grate whatever you have and any extra you can freeze and just thaw out when you need it. In fact, that's what you see here is some frozen butternut squash Stephanie is draining on some paper towels to use for a big batch of these. Other than the butternut squash, we also need about a quarter cup or so of diced onions. And we're going to soften those in a little bit of vegetable oil with a pinch of salt. And we're just going to cook those until soft and sweet. Once those are done, you can set those aside. All right, on to the cakes. We're going to take a couple cups of our freshly grated butternut squash with some salt, some black pepper, some cumin or cumin if you prefer, some curry powder, and that's pretty much it. All right, you don't need a lot here because we want to taste the natural goodness of the butternut squash. All right, we're going to give that a quick mix. I'm also going to beat one large egg. Okay, mix that in. Now, at this point, if I wasn't worrying about gluten, I would just add some flour. But we're not going to do that because this is gluten-free. So we're going to use these two fine products. This is gluten-free corn flour and also a garbanzo bean and fava bean flour. So you're going to find these at pretty much any health food store, any specialty grocery. Bob's Red Mill, very well known for these specialty flours. So those are not too hard to find. All right, so we're going to add those two non-wheat flours to our mixture. All right, we're going to give that a quick mix. And by the way, we really should have added our now cooled soft sweet onions. So we're going to mix those in. And then that is really it. Now it probably would have been okay mixing with just a fork, but you know, when your name is Stephanie Stivetti, you got to get all Italian on this thing and use your hands. All right, so either way, once it's mixed, you're ready to fry. All right, we're going to put our heat on medium. And this is pretty much like any potato pancake or vegetable cake would be. A little bit of vegetable oil in a skillet. Like I said, medium heat. You're going to flatten that out to about a quarter of an inch and fry them for about three minutes per side. Although, you know what? This is not an exact science. You want it crispy and browned on the outside, tender and delicious in the middle. This is very versatile. You can do, you know, large ones if you want to do like first courses. You could do small little silver dollar size to use as like a base for an appetizer. So you can go a lot of different ways with this. Now, Stephanie tells me these are traditionally served with plain yogurt, which would be delicious. Or as we did here, some just regular sour cream, little color. We did some chopped pumpkin seeds. Then I tasted this and I was like, man, that is really good. But you know what? I needed a second opinion. So we gave Stephanie some. And she made faces like that, which of course you can't fake. So you know it's good. So anyway, there you go. Easy, nutritious, and delicious butternut squash cakes. Thank you, Stephanie. By the way, you're going to read more about her on the blog post. She's also posting a version of this recipe on her site with her own unique voiceover. So you'll want to check that out. So anyway, we hope you give that a try. Very seasonally appropriate. All the ingredients are on the site, as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.